Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about removing the cylinder head from a twin cam four stroke Yamaha outboard and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. The reason we take the cylinder head off this outboard is that there was water in the oil. As the water got added to the oil, it was overflowing, you know, it was filling this up completely. So that's where this all began. Unfortunately, because of when this happened, I didn't have time to do much more than the diagnosis phase. But when I was cleaning my hard drive up, I thought, you know what, let's edit it, get it out, rather than throwing it away, even though it's not really a complete job. All right, hope you enjoy. Ron and I have been pushing on with a bit of timber work in Renko. So let's have a look at this poor oh, Yamaha, see what's going on. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of time between now and actually going away on our trip, but while Ron was doing some timber work on Renko for me, I thought I may as well have a quick look at his outboard and see if we could figure out what was happening with it. Never worked on one of these Yamahas before, but it's just a four-stroke motor after all. A couple of screws missing from here, but looks like just electrical cover maybe. Hose cover. Then we'll get the rocker cover off, see what we see. Obviously a twin cam, I believe it's a twin cam straight four. It's worth having a good look before you just touch anything on a motor. That way you don't go back and go, oh, did I lose that screw? You're like, no, nope, it was never there. Plus you might see something obvious that's the cause of a problem. In this case where you know it's not something simple and external, but depends on the situation. Always have a good look before you start reaching for the tools. All right, let's start at the beginning. Start stripping down, see what we see. All right, looks like a 10 mil nut at the top and then just these rubber catches. Okay, off. Pretty standard sort of uh, outboard timing belt tensioner. And we've got some marks. We could probably rotate it till it all lines up to make reassembly slightly easier. Let's do that. See here how emulsified the oil is. All right, a few Phillips heads to get the cover off here. All right, get this off. Spark plugs. Always good to have a record of how things go back together, particularly if you don't have the service manual. Okay, in fuel filter, fuel pump run off the cam, presumably over to a VST here. So let's just get the fuel filter and the fuel pump out of the way. A little retainer here for the fuel hose as well. I'm just putting all the bolts back in where they came from. Any part I can't do that, I'll put into a Ziploc bag, but I always prefer that system. You can see here also this pump's lifting up. It was obviously under pressure on the camshaft. That lobe was obviously up, lifting it. Looks like there's a bit of rust on the cam from the water and the oil. Bit of damage done by the moisture already. That's the lobe that drives the fuel pump. I didn't really show how that fuel pump works very well in this video, so I thought I might just show you quickly on paper so it makes sense. With this particular fuel pump, there's a pump, there's an in, there's an out, and then there's a push rod here that runs a diaphragm. So as that push rod goes in and out, it pumps fuel through a series of one-way valves. In this case, the push rod is driven by a lobe on the cam. So as the cam rotates, you end up with a high spot and a low spot, like you do when you're opening valves. High spot pushes the push rod in, low spot allows it to return. You can see that it was sitting on a high spot of the cam because when we undid the bolts, the whole pump pushed out. This happens on a two stroke. Instead of being pushed by a rod like this, very similar design, except there's a little hole here, or a hose, and a vacuum pulse. You either get a low pressure or a high pressure pulses in and out to drive the pump. So this ultimately is the difference between your four stroke fuel pump and your two stroke fuel pump. All right, let's get this rocker cover off. It's one piece going across the exhaust and inlet side. Tricky one's gonna be the 10 mils down here, but they don't look too bad. Take this rocker cover breather hose off. 
I'm just taking this bracket off to give myself access to the bolt through the top of the timing belt tensioner pulley. All right, let's see if we can rattle these cam pulley bolts off. Hmm, wasn't too hard. Very good. All right, let's take this tensioner off. Just get this uh, timing belt tensioner off now. Looks like there's a little mark on the flywheel heading off this way. But we're not going to rotate anything from this point onwards until we get the head off. All right, should be good to go for rocker cover now. Definitely surface corrosion on all the cam lobes, which is not good. And obviously more hints of the emulsified oil inside. Oi, oi, oi. All right, let's work on the inlet side now. Got the injectors here, inlet manifold. So hopefully we can get the inlet manifold away enough. Can we? Maybe we can to get the head off without totally removing it. Don't know. We'll try carefully. And then on the exhaust side, what do we got? Bolts there, bolts there. Doesn't look too bad at all, actually. All right, cool. Let's start on the inlet side. The tide's supposed to be going out, but these lines are actually getting more slack. All right, where were we? Inlet manifold. All right, 12 millimeter bolts for the inlet manifold. The big question with this outboard is, if it is a head gasket problem, if it's coming through here, is it because it overheated and maybe there's a bit of warpage, blowing head gasket, whatever, or is it corrosion? In which case it's uh, pretty hard to fix. More expensive to fix than it is to replace. Sadly. The last bolt for the exhaust manifolds on this extension Looks like some sort of extension sleeve, so you can get to it, which is quite nice. I've backed them all off here as well, so you can see it comes away enough to get the head off, no dramas. Looks like maybe O-rings. Yeah, it looks like O-rings inside the plastic inlet manifold. So, bolts on the exhaust side are straightforward enough. Right, I'm gonna put the cams into a clean rag each but I'm going to put all these bearing caps back on exactly as they came off. Just going to lay them out, same order, same orientation, then we'll put them back. Hydraulic lifters, corrosion on those too. Mm. All right, let's put all our our uh, bearing caps back in so I don't get confused, lost, reoriented, that kind of thing. Note to self: orange exhaust, yellow intake. All right, I've got to go home and get some Torx bits for the uh, ratchet so we can get these head bolts out. All right, running out of time. Got to get out tonight. But hopefully these bits fit. Let me get this head off quickly before I go out. This is the bit I'm using, T55H. Seems to fit perfectly. So let's uh, sort of do it in reverse order, come into the middle. I think I'm going to need a bigger breaker bar. It's only a 3.8 socket though, so I need an adapter or a long 3.8 bar to get these undone, I think. All the head bolts were very tight, but did manage to get them undone with the uh, 3 8 ratchet in the end, so worked out. Half inch probably would have been better, but managed to do with what we had. All right, and the cylinder head's certainly not 
putting up any fight to come off, so let's grab it off and have a look inside. Certainly had plenty of water through it. Particularly this second cylinder, number one and number four by the looks of it. But I'm not seeing any catastrophic corrosion yet. Alright, let's put this to bed for the night, but it may not be terminal, which is great news. It's pretty gentle, that's for sure. It is, yeah. Which is good. I'd rather be gentle and, yeah. than uh, do damage to it. Yeah. No, alright, let's give that a whirl. Thank you. A lot of gunk in the water jackets here. Doesn't go that far though. Be interesting to see what the block's like, but this passage here is completely blocked, which obviously cools the exhaust. I'm thinking maybe this is a head gasket problem due to overheating, possibly an alarm failure too, rather than corrosion. Apparently a few of these just the block corrodes and it's pretty much hard to fix but this looks like it may be recoverable just frustrating about the uh, rust that's already on the cams and the bores etc because of the emulsified oil makes what could have been a relatively simple fix into a much bigger job it's quite hard salty corrosion wow. All right, here we go. Ooh. Take a bit of effort to pry this puppy out, I think. Ah, there we go. Ugh. Yep. Some nice river mud in behind the thermostat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would be very surprised if this didn't all stem from overheating. Yeah. All right, I reckon we just spray the bejesus out of it with our tech tool, so just watch so it doesn't get you at all. Oops, sorry. Get the cowling on. Put a straight edge across it, and it's actually pretty good but I still do suspect warping due to overheating. But we're gonna uh, dress it up on the sandpaper, put the uh, blue ink on it, and see if we've got any lower high spots, which will get rid of our little scratches that you can see. Definitely pitting in places, but I'll show you that in the workshop under better light. Put a cloth over the top. and get it home. Well, thanks for watching. Just a bit of a quick bonus vid, really. Uh, obviously, we didn't get a chance to see this job through. Uh, I believe Ron has decided to replace the outboard because at the end of the day, it can be quite expensive to fix an old outboard like this, and you still end up with an old outboard, you know? So by the time you buy camshafts, you know, lifters, get the head machined, is it worth it? Probably not when you depend on your outboard to get on and off the island the way Ron does. I still have the cylinder head at home, so when we get back, we'll definitely have a closer look. I also have that two-stroke outboard that ran without oil at home, so when we get back from this trip, we've got a few outboards to put together now. All right, we'll take care, and I'll catch you soon for a longer video on the weekend. See ya. I know if you're still here, you're likely a D-Squad fan, so I'll put some D-Squad at the very end. But I was also cleaning up the videos on my phone, as well as the computer, and I found an old video from when uh, I went to visit Doug. So I'm gonna put that on first, then I've got some old D-Squad actually from when Dottie was still alive, so enjoy.
Doug was driving. No, I was driving and Doug was in the passenger seat. But well, now I'm glad I wasn't driving. I've been barred from driving because of well, you got the coolest truck in the whole yeah, neighborhood because <laughs> so of beverages. Like, yeah. so. <laughs> so now it's my turn to be passenger. Oh, is that why I'm driving? I just thought you wanted me to let you drive. The I truck. did want you to drive the truck. Well, there, there was driving the truck. Well, there was multiple multiple reasons. <laughs> so I'm driving. We had a good meetup. We had a wonderful meetup. We met lots of nice people. A lot of yeah, nice people. Happy to be there, I was they? surprised yeah. how many people that only watched your channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they came down. I met all these show. people. Like, I was like, hey, how you going? I put my hand out. They go, where's Doug? Who are you? And I do the whole kind of like, ah, you know. Anyway. I asked half a dozen people, what what, did you, what brought you down here from Missouri or Arkansas? And they said, Stu. <laughs> what because you started watching my videos? Oh, we don't watch your videos. We watch Stu's videos. Like, oh, that's, that's harsh. Said, Get off my fucking butt. Yeah, we, we don't watch somebody that knows what he's doing, not you. You're a hack. You know, so, yeah, that's true. Okay. I aspire to be a hack. Yes. <laughs> I inspire to be a hack. You know, aspire. I'm looking forward to the video said? we make. Aspire. 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 Oh, aspire. 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 I'm looking forward to the video that we make when we're out doing the salvage on the. On exactly. The yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Cool. Yeah, High five. <laughs> salvage. Yes. I'm. Saying, I'm. I'm. Even if it's just a toilet, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what it is. Pick that thing up off the bottom. I'm gonna find service. it and salvage it for sure. Yeah. 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 That'll be fun. Exactly. It's not the uh, it's not the value of the thing; it's the it's process. The, you got it to the surface. Yeah, yeah exactly. I found a buoy that was sunk on uh, in a, when I we were up sailing around the uh, San Juan Islands. Yeah, yeah. Anchor was snagged up on it. The, the lady that has the owns the boat. I said, yeah. "You really don't want me doing this to your wedge. I want my anchor back." It's like, okay, fine. <laughs> you know? Cranking that thing. Finally, this huge Volkswagen sized thing comes up out of the darkness in the water, <laughs> and it's like it's a freaking buoy. It's upside down. Oh, you know? down. It has, it, I would, I love. I was in love with it because it, it has like a hundred pounds. Of lead weight yeah, on the bottom. Right. Oh, like is that, score, you know? Is that this. in your keel now? No, it's no. not because I had to fly home. Right, okay, like, yeah. Coming up with that. Yeah, 100 pounds of lead in your carry on luggage is not. Yeah, they, they wouldn't have gone for that, so. Yeah. They'd have charged him two extra seats in the, <laughs> yes, that's the it. plane to carry that on. Yes. Uh, anyway, it was a lovely day. It was a lovely day. Well, now we're going to eat Mexican. The Mexican Tienda. Mexican. Mexican Tienda. Mexican Tienda. Which is MSDS. It's for you safety guys. MSDS. <laughs> MSDS. Yeah, well, the guy that runs the place is is a Mexican, actually. A real life, life Mexican. Yeah. yeah. A real life. <laughs> if you put that, if you whoop that okay. MSDS thing in a Mexican yeah. uh, tone. I might swing it by. He might just. He yeah, might believe it. CC. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> we may not film that. Bird bath together. You're having a bird bath together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's very strange. 